No matter what you do, Fallout New Vegas always begins on October 19th, 20 minutes to midnight in the year 2281. In your typical 20 hour playthrough, you might finish the game in mid to late November. But what if you woke up after being shot in the head and the doctor told you you've only got one day left? Would you make the most of it, or would you ask yourself, can you beat Fallout New Vegas in 24 hours? When I say 24 hours, I'm talking about 24 hours according to Fallout New Vegas' in-game clock. Time works differently in Fallout New Vegas compared to our world. The default time scale used by the game is 30, so every minute of real time is 30 minutes in game, which theoretically gives me a mere 47 minutes to beat New Vegas. I'll come back to why those 47 minutes are imaginary in a little bit. I used a mod to keep the clock on screen all the time, and the timer begins at 23.41pm. The next time you see that time on screen, I'll be dead or the challenge will be over. My special stats are all based around getting through New Vegas as quickly as possible. There are no restrictions to weapons or skills or movement. For a single day, I can do anything I want. Timer's gone though, it comes and goes as it pleases. Put another way, time stops in dialogue when you're picking skills, when the pit voids open, when you're loading into a new area, during mini games like hacking or picking a lock, and even, believe this, when the game's paused. I'd love to say this is a normal speed run, but it just isn't. Before leaving in the dead of night, daylight savings time struck again, thrusting me towards 8am at breakneck speed. I anticipated going through this challenge multiple times, and I won't cheat by using console commands to change the time. The new start time is 8am on the button. Trust me, by the time we're finished, this will be inconsequential. You won't have time to worry about your toothache when you're being tossed into a volcano. Those of you who've been around here for a while have a general sense of what my intentions are regarding completing New Vegas as quickly as possible. Yes Man's ending is the quickest, and the quickest route to his heart is through Cazador Canyon. With time still being my most important commodity, I made sure to waste none of it by killing the Cazadors and their families in the alley. Their experience pumped me up to level 2, and I'd need all that experience if I was going to get speech up to 100 later on. I hung out at Bonnie Springs for a little while longer, after I impressed myself by using a grenade launcher to launcher a machine gun towards me. Left a little after 10, zapped the big corners for more experience, hotkeyed my armor so I'd only have to wear it in combat, you move faster when you're not wearing armor, discovered Red Rock and immediately tested the fast travel system. Fast traveling takes up valuable time that can't be wasted on frivolous nonsense. It takes an hour of time to go from Red Rock to Good Springs via the mouse button fast travel combo move, but on foot, you can't even reach the dead big corners before 45 minutes has flown by like it was only 22 seconds. Not that it mattered, the strip was my goal. The fiends, pissed about my harassment of their cows, burned me alive and cut off my leg. By the mid-afternoon, I'd made my way out to the field shack, camped out by Nellis. I never had the minutes to spare to stop and buy more medical supplies. I couldn't put any extra points into medicine because there are no spare points. And sleep? F idiot. So, what did I do? I carried George to the boomers as a show of good faith. Peace between nations, some other second thing, all that great sh**. Losing my Georgie was worth it, only so I could learn that tossing him was far faster than dragging his body. After surviving their bombardment, I thought maybe just this once I could do something stupid. Why talk to the guy at the gate when you could sneak into their base and assassinate their leader? I assumed, because of advanced age, that she wouldn't fare well against my spiked punches to her fanny. She weathered the blows better than I expected, so I took off my gauntlets and dropped a stim pack to even the odds but the c*** doesn't play fair. She ran away momentarily, tipping the odds in her favor, as the shock of her maneuver left my guard down enough for me to get both my arms broken in one move, forcing me to flail my wet spaghetti noodle arms against her until she died. With two factions down, and no discovered locations near the strip, I spent 40 minutes traveling to the underpass in style, and another 90 minutes making my way to the strip itself, where of course, I couldn't afford to get in. However, what most of us in Mitten Squad didn't know was that you don't need money to get in if you're willing to kill. The Securitrons at the gate all have keys locked inside their Mitten compartments. Speaking of killing, a good bit of it happened at the Strip. I began with the Omertos at Gamora, used the spike knuckles on them until Shrek showed up and made me sad when I killed him, played grenade catch with the white gloves in the Ultralux, made sure to kill Chauncey for eating people, could have reached out and poked Mortimer's eye out with my spear, threw it instead, missed, entered the tops, and as the minute hand approached the part of the clock to represent midnight, I approached Benny. Lacking any charismatic charm, I failed to convince Benny to head upstairs for some alone time, tripped off the stairs, impregnated his head with a spike. He lived, believe it or not, just not for very much longer. Then I ran up to his hotel room for unknowable reasons. Swank followed me up there, as did everyone else. Luckily for them, I had love and hate and bad jokes to go around. At level 7, I still hadn't put any points into speech, because I'm not relying on speech ever in this challenge. I spoke to Yes Man to get his wheel moving. 
met him over in the Lucky 38, I played catch with a gun in the basement by myself, thought, barrels hurt, maybe my next New Vegas video could be with only a barrel, and back upstairs, I arrived at the point of no return. Five hours left. I didn't f*** up the great cons enough, still hadn't met the Brotherhood, and then there's the rest of the game. I failed. I did not beat Fallout New Vegas in one in-game day, but that's okay because I never wanted to. Round 1 is always the practice round, even if everyone, including me, agrees that it isn't. I learned a lot, knew what mistakes to correct, and reloaded the save to begin again. The big picture remains the same, yes man ending as quickly as possible. The special stats and skill setup are identical as well, because the challenge starts at 8.01, after all that shit has been set in stone. I didn't consider for a second, during the entirety of this challenge, that using the Fallout 4 menu mod could have consumed valuable minutes since time usually stops when you're looting in New Vegas. Consider it a compromise for the 20 in-game minute difference between when the clock first showed up and the time I used as my start. Those 20 minutes are the dark horse of round 2. I considered slapping the dislike button on the way out of Doc Mitchell's birth canal after being misled about what I was getting into with this life, set off for Cazador Country once again, this time not stopping to pet them with a grenade, Doing so would distract me enough that I make a mistake like falling backwards off a rock and cracking my dome in half. That's what the hat was for. I did f***ed with the jackals again, this was a neat kill, and arrived at the blown apart house a whopping 20 minutes earlier than I did in round 1. To deal with the cons, you've got two choices. Talk to one specific con, or kill their leaders. You know what I did, I know what I did. This bitch came up to me with a sword and a shield. I had a gun. I had to assert my dominance. In the last go around, I never touched the Brotherhood of Steel. They're not conveniently anywhere near anywhere I wanted to go. So I took a shortcut across the desert through Fiend territory towards Hidden Valley. The path there led me to Camp McCarran, where I borrowed an NPC soldier's uniform on the off chance I'd feel like riding the monorail later, abducted Veronica, came dangerously close to considering using the use any ammo in any gun glitch from my last New Vegas video, decided against it, got into a boxing match with a lobster in Scorpion Gulch, which is a horrendously unpleasant place to be when you're without cloth. Inside the valley bunkhouse, Veronica predictably made my life harder by refusing to open the door like a good tool. As I've said all along, time is rare. I couldn't stand around waiting for her to walk to the door. I knocked her out with a bullet, tossed her over by the door, and waited for her to wake up like a gentleman. With the Brotherhood of Steel, now an afterthought, I used three of my remaining hours to travel out to Nellis. Veronica assumed when I knelt down with a gun that I was proposing I kill her. It wasn't her I was proposing to kill. Pearl passed away at 12.41 a.m. A few hours later, in the wee hours of the morning, I hit the strip and took Benny's life as well. Got the platinum chip, assumed I took care of anyone worth caring for in the Gamora Casino, raised speech up to 100, ended the reign of Robert House, and wiped out who I could at the Ultra Lux, but injured myself in the process. Running low on time, ammo, medical supplies, and functioning limbs, I ran for the gift shop was accidentally rude to Sarah, and she didn't have any medicine for me. Out of options, I ran for Yes Man. The entirety of the tops followed me up to Benny's room, paid me back in full for everything I'd done to them, ending round two. At this point, it should be clear that you cannot beat Fallout New Vegas as Jack Bowser by using conventional means. So, we get unconventional. Round three, back to 801. To prove how different things will be this time, I began by putting Doc Mitchell's head on the wall. A tumbleweed killed the vibe I had going on the way to the chat store. I'd gone there for a 357 revolver and a handful of bullets. For technical reasons I won't attempt to explain, you can use some weapons in New Vegas to soar through the sky like some sort of winged creature that doesn't exist. To do this, buy a weapon that reloads one bullet at a time like a revolver and at least two kinds of bullets. You need at least three bullets in total. Every time I had two bullets and tried to do this, I got punched by an infinite reload animation that overpowers the pause button. To do this glitch, hotkey the revolver, equip it, and start walking. Double tap the button to swap ammo types and bring up the pit boy as soon as you can. While still holding W to walk forward, unequip the revolver, put the pit boy down, and take to the sky. But be careful. Any sloped surface can and likely will send you up beyond the clouds but the expectations of fall damage can be subverted by quick saving and quick loading just before touching back down on solid ground. This one teensy tiny trick saved more than an hour of in-game time getting to Red Rock, giving me time to kick back for a minute and play exterior decorator while also searching in my peripheral vision for Regis. He was inside the Great Con Clubhouse, waiting with a sword and shield for some dip with a spear to come and try his luck against him. My victory came at a price. I had Papa Khan sunglasses, 
but I was also one hour ahead of schedule. Too much of a good thing as they say. In addition to using the power of flight to fly, you can also use it to reach places you simply couldn't on foot, like the desolate barren wasteland that exists in spaces Todd didn't intend to be seen by your eyes. I played every card I had, all at once, 52 pickup style, when I got stuck atop a telephone pole while being pelted with bullets. I had no runway. I could only hope I achieved liftoff midair. Then I spotted the King of Ramps, the Peace de Resistance, not that cement the seesaw. I think I'd have been happier if I'd slammed nose first into the monkey bars like I did as a children. I told you what Todd did as a preemptive warning about this section. The sands near Black Mountain are a dangerous place for my kind, the walls are camping with active camo, but I'd gotten what I wanted all along. I was safe from Kowalski. I desecrated his rock and flew away before I could hear him start sobbing. That's how I got stuck. I needed a vantage point to watch both him run to me and Veronica wonder where I went. Just in time for a late dinner, I descended down the stairs to the Brotherhood's bunker to knock them off my checklist. Flew away, and couldn't have landed in the death club part of town any worse than I did. It's raining, it's pouring, my poor feet are wet, and not even an hour later I lost an hour of progress because I gorged on disillusionment. It had to be the glitch not working anymore. It couldn't be me f***ing it up because I couldn't rage quit a game and watch a tutorial for something I just spent the last hour perfecting. Back in my calm down pants. I got spammed by this ramp, used an NPC uniform I scavenged to ride the rail into the strip, and stormed the tops at around 9ish. Not right at 9, every second counts but I still value public perception among make-believe characters above the success of my own idea. I didn't bother meeting Yes Man. Should you eliminate the house before talking to him, you'll only have to go up there the one time. Nothing wacky or unpredictable happened inside the Ultralux. I turned an angel into a Cyclops in Gamora. Apparently they employ ghouls among their ranks. Mr. House thanked me for delivering his gift, invited me down to his basement, and I made the mistake of doing nothing for an hour. The demonstration itself took an hour as well. That's almost 20% of my total time gone if you're bad at math. I killed House at about 150, told Yes Man to meet me at the Lucky 38, he popped himself into the mainframe, and I started to wonder if I had time to save the president. It turns out, I didn't. Somewhere in the madness of stealing the sunglasses off Papa Khan's dead head, I failed to speak to Regis. Nothing short of becoming a fighter jet would get me to Red Rock in time. Fast traveling out there ate up two hours, so that's another two hours which gets us to 7.15. And I went through Camp McCarran. I can't just fast travel to the Strip's north gate. For a record-setting third time today, I failed to beat Fall at New Vegas as Jack Bauer. Now, in attempt number four, with all the knowledge of my forefathers behind me, the real game begins. My final run. All bullsh** is allowed. Glitches, exploits, cheese. Only console commands are off limits. I ransacked the doctor's house for an assortment of medical supplies. Bought a 32 pistol from Chet thinking it would be like a 357 revolver. Chet wouldn't make eye contact with me after that embarrassment. I made eye contact with Easy Pete's revolver, took aim, he called out for himself. I snagged his gun and fled the scene landed on the other side of the forbidden door. I don't know what mod this is from, but I don't have the mental fortitude to relive Squidward's dream level right now. I pulled out the binoculars to see if my ears were playing tricks on me, rolled into Red Rock Canyon, spoke to Regis, and marked a waypoint for Hidden Valley. Veronica is too far gone for me to reach her. She's a useful tool, but completely unnecessary to get inside. Not going to 188 Trading Post to get her meant I could spend a while stuck in an invisible hole with these rocks. Near Black Mountain, I stopped giving a f about Death Claws. I can't outrun them, but I am faster than them. To enter Hidden Valley without Veronica and without a level 100 lockpick skill, I return to the reliable method of cheating by quick saving and quick loading in rapid succession to clip through the door. New Vegas doesn't accept that as a possibility. Ramos assumes you got in there the natural way, and you're home free. Two factions down in less than six hours. I bought grenade rifle grenades, a railroad rifle, and a ripper from a robot. Put on my only hat, blew past George, said goodbye to Pearl, and graced the strip with my terrifying presence yet again. Offed Benny, walked with my eyes wide and my jaw on the floor at the sight of being on the strip with Benny dead and the sun still out. With House very dead, I ODST'd down from the great ramp in the sky, melted Marjorie, I rippered and teared things apart in Gamora, did the yes man sh and used the railroad rifle against the chairman. It's awful, it's a Fallout 3 gun, I don't know why I have this. After informing Yes Man that I exist and he could meet me at the Lucky 38, I went on over there and Victor welcomed me to Vegas. Mr. House died hours ago. Victor is supposed to shut down after House dies. That festered in the back of my head while Yes Sir uplinked himself and I rambled about all the people I don't care about. Finally, real, tangible progress has been made. 
Unfortunately for me, I hadn't discovered the El Dorado subbase yet, nor any location near it. Traveling out there robbed me of two hours. The return trip did as well. Three hours, twenty minutes left. I'm airborne. I overshoot the gate in my enthusiasm. Run for the light, but it's only paper mache. A set piece in a better man's story. What's weird is I didn't need to hurt the robots to get back into the strip, but I couldn't fast travel directly to the gate. That's good game design. I've got a good handful of time left, and the second battle of Hoover Dam begins at 2 p.m., four hours past my bedtime. Before jumping to any absurd conclusions, I paused the challenge, waited until after 2 p.m., then started the battle again to see if I'd be placed back in time at 2 p.m., and New Vegas crashed. Then I waited until around 8, let's did this, and it's 2 p.m. again, meaning, once and for all, you most likely cannot beat Fallout New Vegas in one in-game day. But after running through this enough times to put Fallout New Vegas speedrunner in my Twitter bio in my Twitter bio, I had to reach the end of the game with some degree of success. I'd babysat my parents' house in the weeks prior to this challenge, I went through a bunch of my old stuff, my 8-step plan for getting an Xbox 360 for my birthday, complete with 12-step backup plan, I found the year my soul fled my body, but more importantly, my Calc 1 notebook containing formulas for adding time to time. I had 3 hours and 21 minutes left on the clock when I spoke to Mr. Yes. He drags me to the dam at its most busy at 2pm, giving me until 5.21pm to confront the legate and save the day. The top side of the dam is a straight curved shot to the first tower. Inside, I didn't bother using the revolver to fly through the corridors, partly because it's a confined space, partly because the NCR had their entire flock waiting for me after I overloaded their generator. A storm rolled in while we were in the tower setting the stage for me to straddle my handgun and ride it to the Legate's camp to confront Linus. We agreed to postpone the fight for the time being. One guy didn't get the memo. His firing animation upset me almost as much as lining up this jump over the fence but forgetting to jump. After killing the nameless one, I flew over the gate and walking into it from behind won't trigger the cutscene with General Oliver. With only an hour left, I clipped into the gate by safe scumming through the gate. Oliver's guy gave me an ocular pat down, I had Oliver tossed from the dam, and did not beat Fallout New Vegas in 24 in-game hours. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.